Okay, you're thinking about getting a pole for at home. That means either A, maybe you've taken a few pole classes, you're already hooked, you're ready to do this pole thing, and you're ready to get down and dirty and you need to pull to home so you can train. Or maybe you've never even touched a pole before. You've just seen some videos online. You're like, I want to do this and I'm all in. Applause. Or you're a seasoned veteran and it's just hard to work your schedule sometimes around you know the open pole times at your studio. Maybe the studio is far away, hard to fit it in with your schedule, work schedule, life schedule, all the adulting things that you know come up in life. So many reasons that we get a pole. I'm here for all of them. So let's talk about what kind of pole to get. Common question, okay, where to start? Number one, my recommendation, don't buy a cheap pole, okay? If you've ever watched any pole fails online, a significant portion of those pole fails are a cheap pole and a pole that's installed incorrectly, okay? So don't just pop on to, you know, your latest local marketplace, Craigslist, and buy one out of someone's garage. Make sure it's a quality pole with reviews behind it, weight limits, uh, proper installation instructions, all of those things to make sure that you stay safe. Because let's be honest, pole is hard enough as it is. We don't need faulty equipment. Okay. So the top pole brands that make poles um, for competition and home use studios use them the most are either Loop It or X Pole. Okay. Yes, there are some other brands, but I would say those are absolutely the number two leading ones. And like I said, those are also the poles that are used in competitions, which in my opinion, gives them some extra cred because they are designed to handle all kinds of body types under all kinds of conditions safely. Okay. So those would be my number two recommendations. You can find links to those particular brands in the notes below to go check them out more. But let's talk about some of the choices you're now going to have to make. First one is like, do I get a pole? Yes. Number two, which pole? Okay. Now, like I said, you can look at the loop it. You can look at the X pole. Pros and cons to both. They are both fantastic. I've used them both. I love them both. Meh. Other things to think about with them. Um, pressure pole or permanently installed pole. Okay. That's going to depend on your training space. Okay. Um, how high is your ceiling? Generally speaking, you don't want to put a pressure pole on a super high ceiling. Nine feet, 10 feet, you could get away with 11, but it depends on your size and what you're planning to do with the pole. If you're doing a lot of, you know, more acrobatic things that are more likely to dislodge it, pressure pole might not be the best thing for you. Personally, I have about a slightly sub nine foot ceiling and a pressure pole is perfect. And I'm going to show you my pole in a few minutes here, but first we're still going to talk about some of the parameters that are you. So pressure pole or permanent. Um, if you're concerned about leaving marks on your ceiling or your floor, the pressure pole is a great option both with Loop It and X-Pole, that's something that they have had in mind in designing them so that they have a bit of a rubber matting around the top of it so that it doesn't leave imprints on your ceiling, your floor. You can have the pole there for years, take it down and not leave damage in your training space, home space, whatever space you're in, okay? So whether it's a permanently installed pole or pressure pole, pros and cons to both. If that's something that you're unsure if one particular one will work in your space with both of these manufacturers, generally speaking, you can email them and ask them your questions. Okay. If you're not sure about it, or you can email me, I'll be happy to give my advice. If I have any, I may or may not. Okay. On that next point of business, pull width. Some people don't realize that there are different widths in poles. And I'm talking about how big it is when you put your hand around it. Okay. There are different sizes. Don't we know it? So currently in the U.S., and it is different in different countries, 45 is the standard, okay? That's what's used in most studios, not all, and in competitions. In some other countries, 40 is the standard, but mostly 45 is the standard. That being said, if you're planning to also do pull in a studio or maybe you're dancing in a club, I find a lot of pullers sometimes will buy a pole, getting you know the recommended pole size, and then maybe they're working in a club and the club has 50s and they find they can't really practice stuff at home that they're planning to use in the club because it might feel comfortable on their pole at home. It's not going to feel comfortable on that bigger pole at the club or in their studio. Maybe it has a smaller pole or a bigger pole. So just something to keep in mind to think about is that if you also you do pole in another location, check and see what size poles they use there. If you want to be able to do the same things on both poles, that might be something to take into consideration that you might want your home pole to be the same size. If maybe your studio has bigger poles and you're like, oh, I have little hands, I'm tired of dealing with these bigger poles, then yeah, get a different size pole at home, something that you do feel more comfortable with it. But that is definitely something to keep in mind. So the general rule of thumb is a 45, 
Okay. Um, 40s are also an option. Spin or static. You can get some poles that do both. There are some poles that only do one or the other. My recommendation is if it's in your budget, get the pole that does both. Okay. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner. Some people kind of have a feeling that, oh, I'm going to wait until I'm a better puller before I start doing spin. I recommend you start playing around with spin, even in small snippets from the very beginning. Once again, personal choice, do you boo, but that would be my recommendation. Okay. So if it is an option to have a spin and static, awesome. If you have to pick one or the other, I would say go with what you feel most comfortable with now and what you will use most. Okay. Cause we don't want that pole just to start collecting dust in your house and not actually get used. The whole point is to actually use it. Pole finish, another big question. And another one that quite often we don't think about until we actually go to purchase that pole. And we realize there are all these drop down options. <sighs> So you've got chrome, you've got brass, you've got stainless, you've got powder coated, you've got silicone, you've got colors. Which one is the right one for you? Well, that's kind of a personal choice, okay? Some people, it's not a hard decision because they have skin allergies. Their skin doesn't do well with a particular kind of finish on a pole. Unfortunately, if you don't know if you have an allergy, you know, you don't know, maybe you haven't tried one like that. But there are some people that do have, you know, an allergy to chrome or stainless. So that is something to keep in mind. Whether chrome, brass, stainless, powder coated, silicone are best for you, it depends on what you're using your pole for, your climate, your skin type. It's much like pole grip. Um, for some people, they like to have um, a pole that has a little bit more grip on it because they live in, you know, maybe a super sweaty you know, or a muggy environment, or maybe they have very slippery skin. Some people like a little bit different. For me personally, um, I find that brass poles in very cold weather and also in very humid, humid weather, I feel like a ninja on. On the downside, Working on a brass pole for me personally, if I'm doing static stuff and I want to do static rotations on a brass pole, I lose some skin. Let's just put it that way. Okay. So for spinning pole, my grip, everything amazing. If I want to do static rotations, it's too grippy for me. Okay. But that's just me. Once again, personal preference. And once again, I'm going to walk you through what I have with my home pole, but that's also going to vary depending on, like I said, your skin, your climate, what you're planning to use it for, all those things. Okay. So. That being said, let's go ahead and take a look-see at what I have in my pole space. Just to kind of give you an idea of an example of a setup. There are all kinds of ways to set up your pole. Some people have it in their living room, their bedroom, their kitchen, the separate room. Do you do what works best for you? But I'm going to show you what I use. Okay, so let's have a look-see at my home pole. I have an X-Pole Expert Pro. It's not super big, okay? But as the Expert Pro, it is the one that has the locking mechanism where you can lock it out on spin, on static, okay? This one is chrome and it is a 45. I have relatively big hands, okay? So for me on the 45, my fingers actually overlap. For some people, that's not the case. And there, of course, you have my lovely assistant, okay? So for me, um, this one, the chrome, felt super sticky right out of the box. That's not the case for everyone. As I said earlier, the finish that you use is going to be a little bit different for each person as far as what works best for you. So this one in particular is a pressure pole. Okay. So it screws in, there's no damage, no permanent installation in the room. Um, and you have to find the stud where you install it. Every time I go to use my pole, okay, I give it a good shake. Okay, to make sure that it's solid and it's not going to come down, even though this is not a super high pole. So my pole is um, just the standard one, no extensions. My ceiling is just shy of nine inches. Okay, I forget the exact measurement. It's been a couple of years since I measured it, but it was just shy of nine inches or not nine inches, nine feet, three meters. Okay. Um, so this pole actually fit perfectly. It could go with a slightly higher, but my garage ceiling where I consider putting the pole in is nine feet, one inch. The pole is too short for that. So if I was gonna put it out there, I would have had to get an extension for it, okay? So this is what I use. As I've said earlier, your pole choice is a very personal choice. You've gotta figure out what works best for you, for your house, for your skin, for your style, all of those things. But this is what I use in my space. Also, as far as space around your pole, let's see if I can give you a little look-see of what I'm dealing with here. Okay, the distance here, this room is not that big. Okay, here 
is my wall space. This right here is the only spot that I sometimes kick on the wall. Well, I take that back. Uh, this is the only wall space that I sometimes kick when I'm in the middle of like a jade split and Allegra. All the walls I have to be careful of like phoenixes, things like that. But just in general moves where I'm on the pole extending my arms and legs out, you can see this is the distance to this right here. So for example, when I'm in something that's extending my legs, this one little pillar is the only spot that I have to worry about. I'm five foot eight, okay? So a little bit less than two meters, quite a bit less than two meters, let's be honest. Okay, so for me, this distance right here, I've probably got around most of the walls is roughly you know, close to two, well, like one and a half meters or around like five feet ish. Okay. With the exception of this little spot here. Okay. So if you're trying to decide what kind of, or how much pull space to have, I mean, the more you can have around it, the better, but you know, let's be honest, our pull space isn't always the pull space of our dreams to start out and you work with what you got. Okay. And I would say with this pull space, most things are workable. If you have less pull space, it might just mean you want to keep with your pull on static so that you're less likely to kick walls and other, you know, objects that might be around it. Okay. So that's my pull space. If you have questions as far as what might work in your pull space, feel free to ask. Or as I said earlier, if you have questions on height of your pull, finish all those things, those things you can definitely direct towards loop it or X pull as well.